Here, the management is speaking. Let's cut across. Growth at 18.8% and sequential at 4% in constant currency. Growth in Q2 was broad based with all industries and geographies growing in double digits in constant currency. This momentum is accompanied by a strong pipeline of large deals and the highest large deal value in the last seven quarters at $2.7 billion. 54% of this is net new. These elements are a clear reflection of the deeply differentiated digital and cloud capabilities we have developed that are highly relevant for a client's strategic priorities. Our digital revenues are now 61.8% of our overall revenue, and they grew at 31.2% in the quarter in constant currency terms. While digital continues to see strong growth rates, we are seeing this quarter acceleration in the growth trajectory of our core services. This is due to our industry-leading automation capabilities and reflects an interest among client clients towards cost optimization programs. We also see this in a large deal pipeline with strong focus on cost reduction programs in addition to the digital transformation programs in the pipeline. While we generally do not share the specific amount of our cloud revenue, we are delighted to share that in Q2, our cloud revenue was larger than $1 billion, showing tremendous strength of our cloud services especially our industry-leading cobalt capability. A strong growth was accompanied by operating margin expansion of 150 basis points, where we had an operating margin in the quarter of 21.5%. This stemmed from cost efficiencies, optimization in large deals, and currency benefits. Our attrition has been decreasing now for three quarters on a quarterly annualized basis, including now in Q2, and we see this trend along a downward trajectory. In keeping with a capital allocation policy, the board has announced a share buyback of rupees 9,300 crores and an interim dividend of approximately rupees 6,940 crores. With that, let me open it up for questions. Uh, Rishi, over to you. Thank you, Salil. Joining Salil is Mr. Nilanjan Roy, Chief Financial Officer, Infosys. With that, we'll open up for questions. The first question is from Ritu Singh from CNBC TV18. Uh, hi, Salil, here. Uh, a quick question on your guidance that you've given uh, from 15 to 16% for revenue, you've tightened it further uh, to about 14 to 16%. The upper end remains the same, but if you could give us a sense on what made you tighten uh, the guidance and also on your share buyback, you had the option to go all the way up to 18,000, as we understand, why capped at uh, uh, about 9,000 uh, odd that you've done? Thank you. So on, um, on the guidance, uh, we, we've had an incredible uh, large deals uh, performance in this quarter, 2.7 billion. We've had strong momentum, 18.8% growth in the quarter. Uh, we continue to see good traction. We also see that there is some caution. Last time we had mentioned uh, that we, we saw some caution in uh, mortgages in financial services. We talked about retail. Uh, we now see uh, some caution in high tech uh, and in telecom. Uh, keeping all of those factors, the, the positive factors and the global macro factors, we have decided to make our guidance narrower at the higher end uh, of the band that we had. Uh, so it was 14 to 16, and now, now it's 15 to 16. Uh, on the share buyback, uh, let me request Nilanjan to address that. please. Yeah, so on the share buyback, of course, the board considers a lot of factors, but coming to a specific point on the maximum, since it's an open market offer, it's limited to 15% of the share capital in reserves, which is about 9,400-odd crores, give or take. So we've, uh, the board has decided a figure of 9,300. Thank you. The next question is from Anisha Jain from ET Now, um, and Anisha sent her question on text. What has supported the margin performance? What are the levers to improve margins here on? Deal win is strong at 2.7 billion. Going forward, do you expect clients to cut spends of this run rate of over 2 billion? Will that continue? Will FY24 also see double-digit growth? 
So let me start with a couple of them. The margin, the luncheon will come back on. On the deal wins, uh, I think this is an incredible performance uh, from from the company. 2.7 billion is a very large number. Uh, we, we have a very a, a strong focus on large deals, uh, and 54% uh, being net new that gives us a really good platform for what we see uh, in the future. Now, large deals we've always uh, maintained. Uh, these are volatile. Some quarters the numbers are high, some are low. These are not. Uh, a very predictable outcome, but in general, if you look over a four-quarter period, we have a fairly good large deal momentum. Our pipeline for large deals remains quite strong today, and it's in a good position. So we feel comfortable with where we are in the market. Uh, just to add uh, the macro comments that I made uh, in the earlier question, th those obviously still hold. Uh, yeah, so on the margin, uh, we've improved from 20.0 to 21.5 sequentially, which is 150 basis points improvement. Uh, we got 70 basis points out of that because of the currency uh, benefits. Uh, all currencies versus the dollar, as you know, depreciated as well. And of course, there was a cross-currency impact. So that gave us 70 bips. Uh, we got 90 basis points from cost optimizations. And of course, you're aware of the levers we deploy in terms of the pyramid, in terms of automation, uh, in terms of on-site offshore pricing. So between that, uh, large deal optimizations uh, and uh, you know other costs which we have been able to take out, our partly offset by utilization, we got about 90 bips from there. We got about 40 bips from reducing our subcons. Again, a cost lever which we've been trying to attack, that gave us 40 bips. And this was offset by about 40 bips from comp related because uh, some of our comp hikes were rolled out in 1st July, as we mentioned. So all in all, we got 150 basis points improvement. Uh, if you see from the guidance perspective, and as we had mentioned in the last uh, earnings call, we had said we will be at the bottom end of our 21-23. Uh, guidance. We have now looking at our first half performance. We have for this year at least tightened it uh, to 21 to 22 uh, percent, and we expect to be at the bottom end of that band. Thank you. The next question also on text is from BQ Prime. Sajith Mangat asks, for Salil, can you elaborate on the demand environment in the US and Europe in context of the geopolitical events in Europe and macroeconomic challenges seen in the US? What is the exposure to Europe, especially Germany? And how do you see the TCV pipeline? And for Nilanjan, similar question on margins again. How do you see the trajectory for margins given weak traditional H2? And what is the kind of leverage available with respect to bench utilization? So on the demand environment, uh, what we see is on the macro front, uh, what I shared earlier, which is uh, we had indicated last time we start to, started to see some concerns uh, in the mortgage side, in financial services, uh, in the retail industry. Uh, we are seeing uh, this time uh, some concerns on uh, high tech uh, and in telecom industry in addition to those. Uh, these are more on the discretionary part of our pipeline. Uh, we are also at the same time seeing a strong large deals pipeline, uh, which gives us some confidence uh, we've pivoted, and I think uh, the market itself is also pivoting with the clients, uh, where there's more and more interest in automation and cost efficiency, and we see that uh, coming through uh, within our pipeline. Uh, we've seen growth both in digital, uh, over 30%, and in core, uh, which shows that both of our engines are, are working quite well. Uh, in terms of U.S. and Europe, uh, today, we uh, in Q2, we had... A very strong growth uh, in Europe, uh, over 30%, strong growth in the U.S., uh, over 15%. Uh, we continue to see the pipeline uh, between both uh, of those uh, geographies today, but also keeping in mind that we are being watchful uh, given the macro environment developing. Okay, that is Infosys uh, management talking about uh, their performance. It's overall a pretty decent quarter on revenues, there is a bit of a miss. That's a number we didn't earlier talk about. Constant currency revenue growth in the current quarter has come in lower than expectations. So Q2 performance is mixed because revenues have missed. But on the other hand, the margin expansion of 150 basis points has taken the street by surprise. 
FI23 guidance has also been tighter. I would suspect on the whole this is a positive because the lower end of the revenue guidance has been brought higher. Uh, the new guidance says the growth will be 15 to 16% versus their earlier guidance of 14 to 16%. So net net, that's a positive. Uh, but it's not a full upgrade because the top line, the upper range of the guidance still remains the same as 16%. The deal wins is the strongest number at $2.7 billion. And the management saying that they're seeing a very strong, large deal pipeline. So deal wins is strong. They continue to acknowledge that the macros remain challenging and therefore they're cautious. And now increasingly, they are seeing concerns and maybe some slowdown in the discretionary part of high tech and telecom. These are the two new areas that Salil Parekh has outlined where you are seeing some amount of a slowdown. Uh, the buyback has also been announced, 9,300 crore of an open buyback at a price of 1,850. So all in all, it's a pretty good showing from uh, Infosys. It's not a thumping beat uh, the way HCL Tech was, which was a beat, you know, an all-round beat. But here on Infosys, there was a bit of a revenue, uh, you know, miss. That's the only niggling worry. But on the whole, it's a good showing from Infosys this time. We'll slip into a very short break, but stay with us on the other side. Markets Today comes up.